Hello and welcome to the program. At long last, President Goodluck Jonathan has declared to run for a second term. The declaration did not come as a surprise at all because virtually everyone following politics in Nigeria knew he was going to seek a second term in office. So you could say what he did on Tuesday at the Eagle Square in Abuja was more or less a mere formality. But the president and his ruling party have received knocks, especially from the main opposition party, for holding the event barely 24 hours after about 58 students were killed in a suicide bombing incident at Government Senior Science Secondary School in the town of Potiskum in northeast Yoba State. We shall come to that issue in a moment, but take a listen to that very moment when he made the declaration. After seeking the face of God, in quiet reflection with my family and after, after listening to the cause of our people nationwide to run, I, good luck, a baby, as you do, Jonathan, have accepted to present myself platform of the People's Democratic Party for re-election as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, the ruling People's Democratic Party will in early December hold a national convention to elect its presidential candidate. Many would tell you that process would be a mere ratification of President Jonathan's candidacy of the PDP because the party has made it quite clear that he is its sole candidate. So we can as well say we know who the candidate of the PDP is. Joining me now on the program to discuss that declaration and the issues arising from it are Liberal Soshoma, a lawyer and political analyst, and Nelson Ekujimi, a civil society person and also a political analyst. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. Let me start with you, Liberal Sam. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, Jonathan declaring people have said he shouldn't have done it, that, um, you know, that incident or that declaration was coming just 24 hours before, uh, 24 hours after the killing of 58 students at um, that school in Patisco. What's uh, your take on it? You know, we always, um, we always um, have um, um, problems with all of this. We always find holes in some of these issues. Even the opposition party that were calling for his head, Merely a day after they were in Bini, all dancing also, celebrating Oshomole's sixth year, sixth year anniversary. And so it was a question of the kettle calling the, the pot calling the kettle black. black. And so they are all um, same and the same. And I really, I, I don't think, um, I really don't see anything in uh, the president declaring a day after the incident at Portiscombe or postponing the declaration. What I want to see as far as insecurity is concerned is that those that are charged with that responsibility should go headlong. The president should give marching order, look, the way you have been doing it, you're, you're, if you're not doing it well, I need you to straight change strategies and I want to see results. And I don't want a reoccurrence of this. But, but, and not whether... Uh, anyway, but that, that is just by the way. Uh, but did, did it come to you, his declaration? Did it come to you at all as a surprise? No, I mean, did you, we, you we said it now. Anybody that um, um, says uh, he was surprised to hear or see that declaration. Mm. It's not um, a follow of political event in Nigeria. It was obvious even as far back as um, two years ago when the president kept saying, no, look, he's concentrating on governance. We all knew. Because almost everything in, in our political and um, almost everything about governance was all about 2015. Everything, it, it got to a point, almost everything came, um, um, everything almost came to a standstill because of 2015. And before then also, we saw the meeting of uh, the PDP stakeholders, you know, adopting the president, and then uh, the transformation ambassadors crisscrossing the length and breadth of Nigeria. So not a surprise at exactly. all. Exactly. And though finally, you know, the president had received some of these people and also did say he had accepted, you know, their, their, their nomination. And then even the party did inform the entire world that they printed only one form for one the form. president. And for so president. it was uh, obvious. Nelson, let me come to you and let's look at Jonathan's speech. I mean, it, it would appear he knew what he was doing because, you know, a lot of people had thought he was going to start his speech by saying, I, good luck, Jonathan, you know, what he said there, the soundbite we just got. That soundbite came 
towards the tail end of his speech, but he, he actually began his speech by talking about security, which is the biggest issue. You think that was smart of the president? Well, um, the issue of security, the president knows very well that uh, without security, there can be no life. You know, so he must have been smart to have dealt with that yes, issue Yes, he was smart to deal with that issue, but uh, the truth of the matter, every Nigerian is already aware. And uh, the declaration, like uh, Libros rightly said, didn't come as a surprise. It was all part of the game of the seat. And at the end of the day, the lead was blown open, and then we all saw the declaration made. And uh, it now behoves on the Nigerian people to look at uh, Mr. President's scorecard and do the needful one. I'm talking comes. about the scorecard. He did score himself very highly because the, I would say, the, the, the majority of that speech, you know, a large part of that speech now was basically dedicated on him talking about his achievement in the various sectors. And um, you, you think that is what will count, that will count for him when the elections come? What will count for him is a mixture of both. Some people will be taken in by his lies, but some people will, also, will know, they will measure him by the reality on ground. The reality on ground in which Nigeria has become one of the most unsafe places to live in the world, to transact business, one of the most, uh, our infant mortality and maternal mortality is one of the highest. We are one of the five poorest countries in the world. Under President Gulo Jonathan, we had electricity of about, he met electricity at about 4,000 megawatts. And under President Gulo Jonathan, we now have it at 3,000 megawatts. And at times, it's going as low as uh, 1,000 plus. The issue of uh, education, we, we know where we are. So all in all, I think it behoves on the people to realize that their destiny is tied to them. And being... we're still going to come to the issues. But I mean, some people, liberals, would say, look, in spite of the criticism and some of the things that Nelson has identified there, that this president, too, has done quite a number of things. And, you know, he pointed that out. For instance, he talked about what he's done in terms of the real sector, Nigeria being the largest economy in the continent as we speak. He also spoke about uh, uh, quite a number of issues. For instance, I know in terms of education, he said, as uh, today, as at today, every state in this country has a, uh, a federal university. Um, what are these? It's not um, about having federal universities. What are the structures on ground to actually say, can we say these um, students we are churning out from these federal universities can compete with their counterpart in other parts of the world? These are issues that, you know, and deep analysts are going to look at. Yeah, if you talk in terms of a few roads, I would say yes. Or like what we, what we saw during the and just um, period. Now, we, we had seen, you know, um, some um, renovations, but um, I would also say not the way the president is scoring himself. If you remember because Morris Wu, quite, quite highly. Yeah, if you remember Morris Wu, Morris Wu scored himself very high, you know, but the Nigerians knew actually how they scored Morris Wu. So it's not for the pre president can score himself, score himself 100 all over 100, but it is what Nigerians mm. score him. And uh, in terms of road, I would not score him that high also. Yes, I would say yes, he had done some, some we've seen, you know, few changes, you know, but not the way he's scoring anyway, himself. And then also the issue of, okay, energy. Very um, I would say it was never 4,000 megawatts because um, we at... The, remember Nigeria, even though that year I said they were going to give us 4,000 megawatts. Oh, 10,000. No, they said 4,000 megawatts in, in December. Yeah, in December. And then by October they said no, they didn't say they were going to give us 4,000, but that they were going to have the capacity to generate 4,000. It would always had, would always had 3,000, and he made it at 3,000, it has not improved beyond that. <laughs> were you surprised at the way these PDP governors who, some of them who were really hell-bent on preventing Jonathan from running, suddenly changed their mind and said they were adopting him as a, a sole candidate of the party? Well, I, I'm not surprised and I know the majority of Nigerians are not surprised. Like uh, liberals like, rightly said, we practice politics not based on issues. You know, there could be have been a sort of a, a negotiations, a sort of back backdoor mm. deals. And that is what has culminated in then Solendry. But by and large, is a reflection of the type of politics we practice. We, we practice. Now, let's turn our attention to uh, the main opposition, All Progressives Congress, APC. The number of its presidential 
aspirant uh, seems to be growing by the day. The latest entrant to the race is the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambua, who only defected to the APC recently. Before now, many of us had thought he was going to run for the governorship of his state, Sokoto, in northwest Nigeria. But it seems we all got it wrong. So Mr. Tambua will be uh, squaring it out now with a list of political heavyweights for the APC presidential ticket. Now, that list, of course, includes former head of state and serial presidential candidate Muhammad Buhari, former vice president Atiku Abubakar, and Kano State Governor Rabiu Musa Kwanko, so not to mention uh, Dai Zaya, the publisher of... Uh, a leadership uh, newspaper. Everyone is waiting to see how the party handles its primaries and who eventually emerges. So now that we know who the PDP presidential candidate is, we're waiting for that of the APC. Let me bring in my guest here now to discuss this further. Um, I have to start with you. Um, tell me what you make of Tambuwal joining this race. Well, uh, what I make of Tambuwal joining this race is like uh, what a uh, fella used to talk, uh, government, uh, the more you look, the less you see. The less you see. Nigeria has become, we're always practicing abacadabra in politics. You can never predict what will happen the next minute. Even as we are sitting down here, we don't know who else is taking this form. So it shows to you the complexity or the unpredictability of the human nature, which is unfolding here in the Nigerian political space. And one is not surprised. And mind you, I think if anybody has a presidential ambition, it is uh, it builds on him to you know express his interest you know and you know exercise it. It's a welcome development. Could, could, could we say the APC Liberals is trying to reach some kind of compromise and come up with probably a younger candidate? Because uh, before now we were talking about Buhari being the front runner of the APC and Atiku not willing to back down. Could it be that both men have? maybe sat down and decided to step down for a much younger person to come and uh, uh, Tambuwal is a neutral candidate. No, so that because from the story we had, it's about three lawmakers in the House that are prompting Tambuwal. Uh, no, but, but, but we well, know the way. Yeah, I mean, exactly. He's, we, he's definitely yes, interested in this. It's because if he's not interested, he would have uh, long come exactly. out and said, well, look, I'm not interested, interested. in this. I want to go to, to the governorship seat in my state. But if you look at, at Elijah Tiko Adibubaka and uh, um, General Muhammad Buhari, these are not people you say will easily compromise. Because in uh, uh, the same vein, Buhari had told us you know, in 2011 that that was going to be his last mm. shot. And um, he came out to say, well, I, I decided to come back because I expected to see changes, but the changes are not there. And also Atiku Abubaka, right from 2007, he's been, you know, attempting, you That's know. True. Quite true. Uh, and so these are not people you think will sit down and say we've reached a compromise, let this man go. Because also, we saw ACN in 2011, if it was about a younger candidate, Reb, um, uh, Ribadu. Ribadu. No, Ribadu was a younger candidate. And then, um, you know, we expected, you know, the kind of backup that um, PDP gave theirs. But we saw what, what became of that candidate at the end of so, the day. So what could, and what so could here, what is, what is happening is, you see, it's like, you know, there is space for everybody here. So let's come and attempt. And but the way if in the course of the process, because I still see some candidates, you know, stepping down, because if in the course of the process, the way the APC are used to doing their thing, if they still do it that way, like the way their uh, uh, national convention went, we still see some candidates stepping down to say, well, from the handwriting on the wall, the party elders are already, you know, settling for somebody else. And so it's the only available big space. That's why you see everybody coming in, because PDP has shut its doors. And so the only door that is opening now is, OK, let's all go there and try our best and see if we can, uh, you know, get a bite. Mm -hmm. And mind you, conclusively on this, in Nigerian politics, it's not about the first position. You can buy a form for the presidential seat, but actually what's on your mind is, look, I'm here, if I don't get hmm. to the rooftop, I might fall on top of the tree. And so, uh, you know, it's all a way of uh, making compromises. Uh, people have been asking, how, how do you, uh, Nelson, how, how do you see the APC primaries going? I mean, the candidates have all come out. Uh, to say they are not stepping. Atiku has said he's not stepping down. Buhari is not, uh, it does not have that character of stepping they down. They say they are all the candidates to be. So they, they are all candidates. Uh, Kwankoso has said he's not stepping down. This must be pretty difficult for the APC to handle. And how well it, it handles it w w will determine how well it does in, in, in the election. De right? Definitely, definitely that is very correct because we will see that the, the quality of candidates that they have are strong contenders. 
And uh, for us, I think it's a good development if we have this type of quality people coming out to express the desire to lead the country and not somebody telling us it was begged to come and, you know, lead the country. All of it, them practically were begged because no, people bought forms wait, for them. Listen, <laughs> whether that has been, that is the new norm. Well, that is the new norm. Even I was listening to the news this afternoon and I heard that uh, people bought forms for Tambu yes. yes. and it's laughable. <laughs> Just like President Jonathan or David Mack. It's, it's ridiculous. They should know we are not fools in this country. <laughs> are they telling us they can't afford forms? A country that is so popularized the way we are, I can't buy form for anybody. Because politics is about allocation of resources. Don't, are, we, are we ignorant? But what do you think Tambua could be thinking now? I mean, he, he, there must be something propelling him. I don't know, but I wish him the best of luck. And I hope whatever emerges out of, this, uh, out of the party's primaries in picking its candidates, I only hope the party will be able to manage it. Or else, let me leave that to your imagination. Do, do you think this party will be able to manage its primaries very well, liberals? I doubt. And, and come I, out I, I, I doubt if they will be able to manage the, the primary because um, the gladiators we see hmm. are not the type that you can manage. And you know, these gladiators also are gladiators that are not ashamed. To cross platforms so we've seen them in the moment it is not favorable to them they would rather move to that platform that is already known anyway we came from pdp we can always go back there there's always room for reconciliation and the rest so we're likely to see and more so drama if it's, in the yeah agency. so if it's about personal ambition which we see that it is now then it will be difficult to manage some people will fall out some will stay back to say well I just gave this a shot because I wanted to, you know, be a minister or I wanted to be an ambassador or I wanted something out These of the guys government. Are, These guys are heavyweight. So, you know? and anyway, so, but let's, uh, let, let me just pause you there. Let's take a short break now. We're going to come back. When we come back, we'll be looking at the issues that are likely to define the 2015 general elections. Don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. Now, the 2015 general election is coming at a time when security is the biggest issue in Nigeria. Boko Haram continues to grab territories and carry out suicide bombing at will. The Nigerian government is facing a very difficult struggle to end the insurgency. For six months now, terrorist sect continue, uh, the terrorist sect, I should say, continues to hold on to 219 schoolgirls it kidnapped from a secondary school in the town of Chibok in northeast Borno State. A ceasefire deal now by the government, uh, which the government, of course, says it reached with the sect, has all but collapsed. The country is basically at a crossroad. So will security be the defining issue in this election? Let me bring you in here very quickly now. Do you think, from your understanding of Nigerians, that security will be the defining issue in this election? Well, uh, because it, it's certainly the biggest topic. It's the, big, it's the biggest issue, but knowing Nigerians for what they are, I don't think for some people it will be the defining issue. But any sane human being must realize that without security, life will be, the life will be non-existent. So it builds on the Nigerian people to realize that the issues that are germane to human existence becomes paramount in determining how they will cast their votes come 2015. What, 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 what do you think? Um, you know the mindset of Nigerians because if, if you gauge the public post now, some people are saying, look, the president is the commander in chief. He can't solve this problem. It is obvious he has run out of idea. He has changed service chiefs and they still can't, you know, tackle it headlong. Why others are saying, look, the president cannot carry gun uh, to some visa. Some people have to do it. Send those that, those that are doing it should be the ones to blame. Why others are saying, no, this is sabotage. 
Some people are threatening that they will make the country ungovernable. And that is why you are seeing all of these killings. So that power will return to the north and all of this. So that already had defined the mindset of Nigerians. To tell you that why some are looking at these issues to say, look, what is happening here, I think Mr. President should be on top of this. Others are saying, look, you know what, you are intentionally causing this to paint the president black. Nigerians can never be united when it comes to matters of this nature. Some people will say, well, it is happening in your domain. We really don't care. So until we are united to begin to ask our politicians of issues, what are the defining um, uh, uh, indices that to grow an economy, if you say yes, you want to grow an ec our economy, if you say yes, you want to turn around the education sector, what are those indices that you're going to use to turn around the education sector? What are those parameters that you're going to use to grow the economy and agriculture, for example, now that we're beginning to import e almost everything uh, uh, from uh, uh, beans to rice to pineapple? What are those things? There was a time Obasanjo came and said, "Grow cassava." And we grew cassava, and there was no buyer. And so, until we begin to look at these issues, it's quite unfortunate. Our politics will still go the same way. Uh, so, so in other words, you're saying sentiments will definitely very, 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 very well. The politicians know so well, and so they play on our sentiment. And what are these issues? Tribe, religion, yeah. north and south. Mm -hmm. You know, so we are divided. And then you say, see somebody tell you, well, this man is a Northerner. And then one thing that pains me so much, this issue of power must return to the North. And then you're not telling the rest of us that, look, no matter how good you are, ah. if you are not from the North, then you are not good to be the president. the president. Yes, some of us don't like President Gulag Jonathan's style of administration, but we need somebody that can, you know, re-road re the, the, the steering of this this ship, you know, to, to so that to, the ship is not so that the ship is not moving to mock him exactly, <laughs> you know. But for the fact that some people believe that, look, it must be our turn. Others will say, well, if it is your turn, if you are born to rule, are we born to be viewers and fetchers of fire? Well, we, we we just have to wrap up, and let me just ask you the final question. You think we're going to get it right in twenty fifteen? Uh, like every human being, I hope that the Nigerian people will do the needful because the only way forward. Is if we vote based on integrity. I am not. I'm not. I'm not going to ask you what the needful is anyway. But I tell you that we are not going to get it right because already INEC is boggling the system with the uh, uh, voters uh, permanent uh, voters, voters registration, yeah, and that, then you're the saying, point. and then you're saying we're going to get it right, but and with the desperation. Ready. I like it's not ready. As I tell, as I, I like talk to you now, DG, in my center, in so many other centers in Lagos, I never said that they cannot find names of registered voters in their data system. You can't find uh, uh, registered voters in data system, and yet also the manual registers are nowhere to be found. No, but we owe it a duty to always talk, and that is the only way to correct. Let's INEC. just let's just hope INEC yes. gets it right because. If we've made all the preparation and everything and INEC gets it, gets it wrong, then it, it will definitely be... We must insist. Disaster. INEC must. It's a must from the Nigerian people. Well, INEC has said it, it, it is certainly going to get it right and that the elections will come and go. But we just we wait and see what, what actually happens. Well, we thank you very much uh, for watching. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Uh, thank, you Shuma, thank you very much. Thank you very much for pleasure. your time. And uh, Nelson Akunjimi, thank you very much thank uh, you for your time pleasure. as well. And thank you very much for your contribution. Well, that's it on the program. If you want to watch it again, it's so simple. All you need to do is go to our website. Uh, the website, of course, is tv nigeriacom You'll find the program there and lots more. You can also watch us on YouTube by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash tv 360 Nigeria. You can as well follow us on Google Plus at tv 360 Nigeria. Or just like us on Facebook. The address is facebook.com forward slash TV360 online. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at TV360 online. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week.